Welcome back to Physical Anthropology. Today we're going to be looking at Chapter 10, the early members of the genus Homo. First, we'll identify characteristics that make the genus Homo unique compared to their predecessors, the Australopithecines. We'll talk a little bit about climate change and how this contributed to human evolution. And then we'll look at two specific species, the Homo habilis and Homo erectus. So what allows you to determine if a skeleton belongs in the genus Homo? The main criteria is the brain size. And you're gonna see that the brain size continues to get larger and larger, the closer you are in evolution to modern Homo sapiens. And all members of genus Homo have much larger brains than those of the Australopithecines, which are closer in size to other apes. We also see a decrease in prognathism. So the jaw is going to get reduced. The teeth are going to be smaller in size over time. And this reduction in jaw and teeth uh, continues and makes the face look flatter. We're going to see an increase in the use of culture, specifically in stone tools. And we're going to see an increase in body size, at the same time, a reduction in the difference between males and females of the same species. So there's going to be less sexual dimorphism, but we're going to see longer legs, uh, more evidence of bipedalism, and a stabilized foot arch, as well as larger hip, knee, and ankle joints to better support the body in the bipedal position. So what happened uh, during this time period that caused this kind of evolution? Um, there was a mini ice age. And during this ice age, there were cycles between warm, wet and cool, dry environments. So one of the, the main things that happened with the bipedalism that we talked about previously was that the grassland is where these animals were living rather than the forests from their ancestors. And so this time period, there was a lot of expansion as well as shrinking of the grasslands. So the animals had to be quite good at adapting to these changes. This uh, diagram here shows you that there's actually a lot of overlap between the different Australopithecine species as well as these early Homo ancestors. So from about 3 million years ago all the way to 1 million years ago, we still see these Australopithecines fossils uh, popping up throughout southern and uh, eastern Africa. And at the same time, the first Homo species are evolving there as well. So they did have an overlap in terms of their range and their existence. But after about 1 million years, we're only going to see genus Homo and the Australopithecines have gone extinct at that point. So let's start with Homo habilis, which is our first example for the genus Homo. These animals were fully bipedal. And you can see evidence in their skeleton. They no longer have an opposable toe. They have a femur that uh, connects to the hip joint at the pelvis in such a way that it's shown to be bipedal. It has a much larger skull. The brain has increased tremendously. So rather than around 400 cubic centimeters, we're looking at 650 cubic centimeters um, available for the brain. So there's a large increase in brain size, which of course we associate with more intelligent behavior. Other types of behavior that we see is evidence of tool use. They're specifically using the Alduin tools, which are relatively primitive in terms of stone tools, but they were using it uh, extensively. And so you have that sharp blade that they can use to help with the butchering of meat and scraping meat off of bones. We do see less uh, facial prognathism. And as I said, the teeth are getting smaller, the enamel's getting thinner, and there's going to be uh, what's called a parabolic dental arcade. However, their postcrania is still similar to the Australopithecus. And then the map on the bottom right shows you some of the locations where we have found these fossils overlapping with the same geographical area that the Australopithecines lived, which were Eastern and Southern Africa. Next, let's look at Homo erectus. Homo erectus, again, we're gonna see a huge jump in brain size. And by the way, these numbers I'm giving you are the average brain size. There's tremendous range because these animals existed for such a long period of time. So the average is 900 cubic centimeters, but there are of course some individuals that are smaller and some that are much larger than that. Notice that the skull now has a very rounded shape here. Um, again, this prognathism in the jaw is getting less and less, especially when compared to something like an Australopithecus. It has a smaller teeth and it's going to have um, also still these large brow ridges. So that's going to be kind of a distinguishing feature between these more archaic Homo versus the more modern Homo species is that they do have these large uh, supraorbital ridges, which are the brow ridges that we often associate with having sort of a caveman looking face. 
we're starting to see new types of tools. Uh, this tool is called the Acheulean tool. And what that is, is that instead of just one side being flaked off, both sides are going to be flaked off. So both this side and this side show evidence of uh, flakes of rock being chipped off of it specifically to make it sharper. And this type of tool is more advanced. It's more difficult to produce. In addition, this is gonna be the first type of um, animal in the genus Homo that has evidence of using fire. So we can see ash and carbon remains at some of the sites where the fossils were located, showing that they are using fire uh, probably to cook their food and to cook their meat. This is gonna be an important point because once, um, once our ancestors started cooking their meat and cooking their food, it meant that it wasn't as difficult to grind down the food that you were chewing. And that's one of the reasons why we see that decrease in the tooth size, because we're no longer relying just on our teeth to grind uh, the material, whether it's plant material or meat, but instead cooking it softens it up. Another really important piece of information is that this is going to be the first of the members of the genus Homo to leave Africa. So all other ancestors that are predecessors are only found on the continent of Africa, while Homo erectus is found in a much, much larger range. So my first question for you is which species had the bigger brain? Was it the Homo habilis or the Homo erectus? And hopefully you remember that the pattern of evolution is that the brain sizes are getting larger, therefore it's going to be Homo erectus. My next question for you is that the use of fire to cook food likely led to the reduction in blank size? Is it A, brain, B, body, C, jaw, or D, brow ridge? Hopefully you remember that by cooking the food, we made it softer, therefore it's not as difficult to chew, and this is going to lead to the evolution of a decrease in jaw size. Now this map is showing you all the different places where Homo erectus fossils have been found. And what's interesting is that one of the first uh, fossils was actually found in Asia. And because it was found in Asia, um, at that point, we were wondering whether modern Homo sapiens also evolved in Asia. However, further evidence has pushed that theory aside and we have now replaced it with the theory that all modern humans did in fact um, evolve in Africa. And so what, what's going on here is we do have evidence of Homo erectus as well in Africa, um, as well as in Southeast Asia, and even all the way in Europe. Now they never made it to North or South America. That's not gonna be until much, much, much later in human development. So only modern Homo sapiens ever traveled to the Americas. But this guy, uh, there's gonna be evidence of migration patterns. So why exactly they left Africa? We're not 100% sure. Obviously you can't learn that much about behaviors from fossils. But most likely what happened is there was climate change, they had to uh, find food, and so they migrated either to follow other animals that were migrating or to find places that had more food because their original location didn't have any. This is just a summary comparing the two species. So again, looking at them, Homo habilis evolved earlier, uh, 2.5 to 1.7 million years ago is when they were existing. Homo erectus does overlap with them a little bit, but they were around all the way to 200,000 years ago. So that's gonna be important because by 200,000 years ago, we do see evidence of modern humans as well. Homo habilis stayed only in Africa, while Homo erectus was able to leave Africa and there are evidence of fossils in Asia. In terms of brain size, Homo habilis is around 650 cubic centimeters on average, while Homo erectus is 900. They both have smaller teeth than Australopithecines, but we're going to con continue to see that pattern in Homo erectus being even more reduced than that of Homo habilis. Also, same with the facial prognathism, it's going to be more reduced. And then in terms of body size, a Homo erectus is actually about the same size as a modern Homo sapien. So if you found a full skeleton, but you didn't find the cranium, uh, the, the rest of the skeleton looks almost exactly like modern Homo sapiens. It's mainly the, the cranial differences that help us to identify the species. So it's about that brain size and about the teeth and the jaw. And that wraps it up for chapter 10.